happy man of monday welcome back this is the first time you're, that you're seeing me so i am going to tell you happy new year happy 2023 i am grateful for my family who stopped by these first couple of mondays to give you a good good word to start your year off right so i'm not gonna mess up the momentum that they started so without any further ado let's dig into the word of god as i always say grab your paper grab your pen grab your device grab your notebook your journal your diary and let's go our man of monday word is coming to us from exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 verses 7 through 14. it reads the lord spoke to moses go down at once for your people you brought up from the land of Egypt have acted corruptly. They have quickly turned from the way I commanded them. They have made for themselves an image of a calf. They have bowed down to it, sacrificed to it, and said, Israel, this is your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. The Lord also said to Moses, I have seen this people and they are indeed a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger can burn against them and I can destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. Keep that verse in mind. Verse 11. But Moses interceded with the Lord, with the Lord his God. Lord, why does your anger burn against your people you brought up out of this land, the land of Egypt, with great power and a strong hand? Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out with an evil intent to kill them in the mountains and wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your great anger and relent concerning this disaster plan for your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You swore to them by your very self and declared, I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and will give your offspring all this land that I have promised and they will inherit it forever. So the Lord relented concerning the disaster he said he would bring on his people. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So what we've really been exploring so far this year is really where we find our anchor. Minister McCarter talked about abiding. Then my sis, my big sis came through and came through with the word about salvation that ultimately all our efforts ought to be rooted in the fact that we already know we're saved, that we ought to walk confidently in the fact that we are saved and that, that all the fruits that we produce are a result of being saved, not in hopes of being saved. So we talked about really how we're going to anchor ourselves through the year and our theme our church's theme for this year is being free being free and really holding on and and being confident anchored in the freedom that christ has provided so i i, I was brought to this story about the holy spirit it's something that i've explored and I, and I and i really has always stuck with me so I, god brought me back to it for this week and we see moses right we we know what happened the israelites built this golden calf and god tells hey god tells moses while they're chit-chatting hey your people they done messed up. They done did this crazy thing. You're going to have to do with your, this, this your people. You know how like when a, a, a child is messing up and the parent is over it. So now it's not our child. It's your child. It's the other spouse's child. So God is like, this This your people, Moses. So God is like, I'm done. So he goes through this thing. They've sacrificed. They've made this other image. They're stiff necked. Leave me alone so that my anger can have its full reign over this people. And then in verse 10, he says something that I think we miss. He says, now leave me alone so that my anger can burn against them and I can destroy them. The last part says, then I will make you into a great nation. Now, when we talk about Moses, often we really take the kind of Sunday school, Sabbath school, Sunday school nuggets from Moses. He was scared. God called him. He was scared. And God gave him a mouthpiece, empowered him. Yay. Good job. God is great. Moses is great. But we miss this part of the story is actually my favorite. Because God is on the verge of destroying Israel as a result of their idolatry. He says, Moses, I'm going to destroy these people, but I'm going to keep you, though. So they're going to go, but I'm make sure I'm going to give you your own church. We're going to start over. We're going to start over. These people are trifling. I ain't got time for them. We're going to start over. I'm going to give you your own church. I'm going to give you your own podcast. I'm going to give you your own YouTube channel. I'm going to give you your own blog. You know, you're going to be guest speaking at all these churches. I'm going to make sure, you know, your DMs stay lit. You're all going to have a speaking engagement. We, we, you and I, we good. These people, no. We're just going to start over with new people. But Moses is like, no, though. Because these people are attached to a covenant that you made long ago to our patriarchs so i care about these people and i have invested in these people and so i'm not doing anything without your presence and i'm not doing anything about these people 
So Moses' heart, his servant leadership heart shows. He's like, great, but these, these people, do. but more than the people, he is concerned about God's glory because he says, you don't want the Egyptians making fun of you and saying, oh, he just, he brought them out of Egypt just to do this to them. So we could have done that. Why he brought them out just to do the same thing that we're trying to do to them anyways. He says, your honor is at stake. Your name is at stake. Your reputation is at stake. So when God tells him, I will make you into a great nation, Moses doesn't even address that. He doesn't care about himself. He cares about his investment and his commitment to the people of God. And more importantly, the glory and the honor of God. And if we go over to the next chapter, chapter 33, verse 12, it says, Moses said to the Lord, look, you have told me, lead these people up, these people up, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You said, I know you by name and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have indeed found favor in your sight, please teach me your ways and I will know you and find favor in your sight. Now consider that this nation is your people. So Moses is pivoting them back to God. Then he replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. If your presence does not go, Moses responded to him, don't make us go up from here. How will it be known that I and your people have found favor in your sight unless you go with us? I and your people will be distinguished by this from all the other people on the face of the earth. So again, God says, okay, my presence will go with you. And Moses comes back to us. He doesn't take it again. Again, he has opportunity to be like, okay, great, fine. These people are trying to it anyways. They get on my nerves too. So let's go, God. Let's, let's start something fresh. Let's start a new church. Let's go. You and me. It's you and me. God says, I will be with you. Then Moses says, if your presence does not go, don't make us go up from here. So Moses' heart is revealed in these two interactions. He is showing God, I am anchored in what you have promised since the foundation of the world. What you promised to Abraham in Genesis 12, I am still committed to that. And I know you're still committed to that because your honor is at stake. Your reputation is at stake. Your name is at stake. Moses is concerned more about God's presence than his provision. And in the age that we live in, I think I've been thinking about this a lot. We love talking about God in terms of what he can do for us and how he can advance our agenda, our careers and all the things we want to accomplish in life. But Moses says, I have the opportunity to advance my goals and whatever dreams God may have for me, because he's giving me, he's literally giving me permission saying, I will make you into the great nation. I'll start over with you. And I'm still, and Moses is still like, mm mm. This, this is bigger than me. This is about you. This is about these people that I've committed to. But even more, it is about your glory. It is about your honor. It's about your stake. And I don't want anything above that. He says, I don't want to go if you're not going. If you're not going to be there, I don't want to be there. If you're not going, I don't want to be there. So as we continue to go through 2023 and really plan out our year, plan out what we want to do, plan out all the fancy things that we may have in mind, I pray that, that we will ask God for the heart of Moses. The heart that says God's presence over his provision. The, the, the heart that says, I remember the covenant promise that God had made with Abraham and that's what I want. I don't care what my circumstances around me look like. I don't care what, how much money I have. I don't care how much my career advances. What I care about is I and lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the earth. That is all I care about. And I want you to take that with you in 2023. God's presence over his provision. God's face over his hand. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I pray that you will like it, share it, allow it to be a blessing to somebody else. And if you would like to donate to our ministry in any way, you can do so. In the three ways that are outlined below of course the easiest way being our cash app dollar sign b-e-r-e-a-n four five 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 let us pray dear heavenly father we thank you god we thank you for your face before we thank you for your hand lord we thank you for your presence before we thank you for your provision lord we thank you for your grace and your mercy and the reminder that you are enough you are enough you are enough 
We are thankful for the things that you do for us. We are thankful for the gifts that you give to us. But you are enough. May we, may, may we have, may you give us the heart of Moses, Lord God. That, that doesn't take the bait. That doesn't take the temptation of advancing our own glory. But always allows our eyes to be fixated on your glory. God, at this time, I petition your throne for Brother Hillary Hurst, Sister Kimberly Jenkins, the Stewart family, Lee Kelly's family, Kiana Greeley and her family, um, little Zoe, little um, Skyler. I pray uh, for all the families who are grieving, all the families who have loved ones in the hospital, the sings as he uh, go, continues to go through his health complications. Lord, there are so many prayer requests that our church has heard. Lord, I can't remember all of them, but you know who you created. You know every image bearer, every child of yours that is in need of your intervention, Lord. I pray for them. I pray for their hearts. I pray for their bodies, their souls, their minds. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.